You know, 2016 has turned out to be a very busy year for us here in the personal finance space, especially since the news that's been happening, it seems like almost every single month now, we hear of companies making acquisitions and transitions and changes. And last week, our phones were off the hook. So we have a tremendous amount of clients at DreamWorks Animation and a huge news hit last week that Comcast is going to buy out DreamWorks Animation for $3.8 billion. Yeah, it's a big number. And we're very excited for our senior executives there. They've been working so hard, such talented group. So, I mean, we've been talking to them. There's certainly been a lot of nervous energy because people don't know what to expect. And, uh, but overall, I think, the fact that the stock shot up so quickly for DreamWorks employees, I think that they saw that as a, a positive. And you know, a lot of people will wonder, when a company be, is acquired versus the company that's acquiring, typically, hypothetically, what usually happens to stock? Typically, if a company is being acquired, their stock will shoot up at a premium. So in the case of DreamWorks, mm -hmm. when the news was hit, the stock actually went up 18% in one day. In one day. Mm -hmm. It was trading in the 27 range, and then all of a sudden it was almost close to $40. In fact, it closed, it closed on Friday close to $40. Right. As we speak, it's slightly under $40. Mm -hmm. Well, and let's talk about the 401k, Brandon, because that's really the second question. You know, after the news hit, every, you usually hear the news in the press, and then the employees get messaging from the company itself. But then as the uh, information kind of settles down, then you're thinking about, uh, how is that going to impact me as the employee? And a big part of our compensation plan when we work at these larger companies is the 401k plan. Right. What happens to the 401k? Well, typically when a company gets acquired or if there's any mergers or acquisition, a lot of your benefits do go through a transition. So when that happens, that usually creates an opportunity for you to reevaluate your 401k and creates an opportunity perhaps to roll it into an IRA or even roll it into the new 401k. But right. the basic thing is there will be a change. And there's pros and cons to each. And so it's best that you sit down with a financial advisor to make that decision because it's not as clear cut as you might think. Plus, in all the years that we've worked with, we've almost never found the company that's being acquired and the company that acquires having the exact same 401k. It pretty much just doesn't happen because every company will have its own plan sponsor and whatnot. Yes. So yeah. good to review all your options. Something that I would love to talk to you about is about preparing yourself. You know, as an employee at a company, we get our paycheck from the company, we get our benefits from the company, and we generally spend more time at companies often than we even spend with our own families. So the environment that you're working at and your benefits are key. So when you think about it, if your company is getting bought out by another company, in many ways it's like joining a brand new place of work. Because sure, some of your colleagues will be the same, but the new company will surely probably have a different culture. Good or bad, it's just different. So I always say for our clients, we like to coach them through preparing for the just in case. So why not take the opportunity to update your LinkedIn update your resume, get your letters of references, and the people that you know who love you at work, have them write you endorsements or just commentary that you can post on LinkedIn. And it doesn't hurt to speak with a financial advisor as well as a, a recruiter. You just wanna make sure that your next chapter at whatever company you're at is the one of your choosing. Let's talk about meeting with a financial advisor, Brandon, because I know a lot of our clients are meeting with us. Okay. But let's say they're watching this video, and maybe they're thinking, I don't know, what can an advisor do for me? I think it's, we should talk about that. Basically, uh, what we do is provide a comprehensive financial analysis of your situation. So if it, it could be as simple as saving for a house or mm -hmm. saving for retirement, education planning, it's really customized to your needs. So what we're, basically the first meeting when you sit down with the financial advisor, it's a general discussion. We wanna find out what your goals, what your objectives are, also your risk tolerance, your time horizon, the basic idea is to just sit down and just have that initial talk. 
and make sure that you love your financial advisor, right? You want to make sure the chemistry is great and that we understand you, you understand us, and that that makes for a great long-term relationship. So this is a great time to do it. You're in a situation where you're probably coming into uh, some money in terms of the stock, perhaps, and perhaps you are a very valued employee that's going to be transitioned to the next company. You might even be looking at a retention package. Retention means additional money to keep you to stay at that company. So all things that you want to be smart about and you want to plan for to make sure you meet the goals that Brandon had just listed out. The other thing that we recommend you do is to set up an emergency fund. You know, you hear people talk about these emergency funds all the time, but I know, Brandon, that we work with clients all the time. They know they need to, but when you're working at a company, your job is stable, and the, you know, the paycheck comes every two weeks, sometimes that's not at the top of the priority list. But right now, going through this transition, setting up an emergency fund is smart, right? It's not only smart, but it's actually very crucial. And even though if you weren't going through this transition, this is something that everyone should have. So typically, we recommend that clients have anywhere between three to six months of living expenses and liquid reserve. Liquid meaning cash, money market, savings account, short-term CDs. And in addition, if you have dependents, for example, family members that you have to take care of, children, or even parents and whatnot, then that number could go a lot higher. So it makes sense to sit down with an advisor and ask those questions. And I think that's what we we always encourage our clients to do and our potential clients to do is to ask questions. Ask of your HR, ask your benefits provider, ask us, ask your CPA, ask those questions so you feel like you're making the most informed decision. Correct.